nothing more than feelings. Feelings can be a big deal. They control a lot of our day-to-day -day activities. So it makes total sense to make feelings and emotions a life skill subject. Welcome to Feeling Science 101. I'm Yuri, and if you're interested in content about homeschooling, you're in the right place. I like to also share about our travel experiences. Sometimes I will have some read alouds and sprinkle it in some hobbies as well. If any of those interest you, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and follow along. We'd love to have you join us in our journey. So we have been getting into this flip book called Learn About Feelings from Timberdoodle, and it has been a fun addition to our days. It's included in Timberdoodle's Kindergarten Curriculum Kit, but it can also be purchased outside of the kit for $19.95 from the website. I'll have some links down below in the description box so that you can check them out for yourself. I love the quality of this flipbook. The pages are really sturdy and you can actually write on them so with dry erase markers so the pages are going, going to last and have a nice laminated protection that will help keep it from getting damaged if it ever gets wet and also it's really great that you can prop it up so that whenever you are covering a certain scene or emotion you can have it on that page I normally have the flipbook propped up somewhere where the, all the kids can see it throughout the days and be reminded of what we had learned of that emotion and scenario the flipbook covers the eight most common emotions which include happy sad scared embarrassed surprised, frustrated, angry, and excited. And you're gonna find 40 scenes or scenarios with prompting questions that are going to help to get the kids thinking. And by going through this guide, your child is going to gain some crucial life skills like critical thinking, problem solving, predicting, inferencing, and connection making. So each emotion starts with a page that has you thinking about what to do when you feel that particular emotion. Like when I feel happy or, or content, I can dance, I can smile, I can sing, I can laugh, and you can include your own as well. And each emotion is going to have five scenarios. So one, two, three, four, and five. And the prompting pages are really well done. The prompting pages are, is where you're gonna find those skills that we're gonna be building. The critical thinking, predicting, problem solving, and making connections. I love the prompting questions because they are really good at guiding discussions. They have helped to spur on so many discussions within our family and bring up different scenarios that have happened, you know, maybe amongst our friends and also within the family. I want to include here that these are the sort of questions you would be asking when writing a story or even an essay. So by going through this flipbook, we're actually training our kids to be able to write in the future. This flipbook has not only been beneficial for our youngest of kids, because we have a three-year-old and also a six-year-old that flipbook is mainly intended for, but even our 13-year-old, our 11-year-old, and our eight-year-old have been getting into the discussions. 
And since some prompting questions may include, who is in the picture? What are they doing? Where are they? When is this happening? Like what season is it? Then a critical thinking question may be, why might the boys not have included the other boy to play in their game? How does he feel? How can you tell from his body posture or expression that he is sad? And predict what might happen next. How can he join the game? And to problem solve, we can ask, what can he do when the boy doesn't want to play because he doesn't know how to catch a ball? What can he do? And then the boy asks to join the game, but the other boys still don't want to play with him. What should he do? And to make connections, you can ask, have you ever wanted to join a game or activity? How would it make you feel to be left out? What can you do during a sport or training to make sure everyone feels included? And these images are very engaging and bright. And like I said, I love the quality of the pages because they are sturdy and help protect them from getting wet. And they are basically dry erase pages. So the flip book actually comes with a dry erase marker. And we love how there are so many variations of the possible scenarios for the particular emotion. And on the pages, you can actually add the reusable thought and speech bubble stickers that can be found at the end of the book. So these speech bubbles are a nice way to get some conversations started and have the kids thinking, what might this character be thinking? Or what do you think he is saying? These stickers are the kind that are reusable that you might find from Melissa and Doug. And they don't always stick on very well, unfortunately, though. So I'm thinking they're not going to last too long, but they are a nice addition to go through the various situations and scenarios. But another option is to just write right on the flipbook. And that has been working out just fine. So there is a dry erase marker included with the flipbook, like I said. But the marker isn't the best quality, so it didn't really last too long for us. So make sure to have some dry erase markers on hand. The last pages of each emotion section includes a blank face template. And you can use the dry erase marker and model the facial expressions of the emotion for your child. If your child is not sure how to illustrate the emotion. I have found that our kids really do enjoy drawing faces on these templates. The rest of the flipbook is the same format, continuing with the eight emotions covered. And those emotions were happy, sad, excited, embarrassed, surprised, scared, frustrated, and angry. I also like that not all the emotions involve children. Here is an adult expressing frustration with his computer. And also, let's see, I saw this one. Here is another adult frustrated. He can't get his suitcase closed and he's running late on time. I like that children are being taught how to recognize and also be able to empathize with others. And they may not be children. They may be grown-ups. It's important for kids to recognize when they are feeling or experiencing these emotions and also to notice these emotions in others as well. So thanks, Timberdoodle, for providing such a fun, creative way to learn about emotions. If you have any questions, share them down below in the comments. I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as I can. And if you enjoy content like these, make sure to like this video. And if you actually don't want to see content like these, please let me know by disliking the video so that I know not to make videos like these in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next videos. And thank you so much for being here. And until next time, bye.